Hello. So I picked up Dead by Daylight on PC. Proton runs it like a dream, actually. Don't let anyone tell you Linux gaming isn't real. So I couldn't tell if this group was a dedicated party or not. Still couldn't tell you based on things like perk loadout, but... These players definitely did bring items that suggest they intended to synergize with each other. And exactly one of them brought a map offering, taking us to Toba Landing. The loadout that I'm running starts with Hex, Huntress Lullaby, which is a, a perk from the Huntress that binds to an active Hex totem. While it's active, for each hook that I've gotten up to five, the time between the warning for skill checks and the skill check itself is reduced. I've also brought Sloppy Butcher, which makes my basic attacks uh, mangle and hemorrhage the survivors, causing them to be harder to heal and bleed out. Unnerving Presence, which makes skill checks harder in my terror radius. And uh, Agitation, which increases my terror radius and makes uh, handling survivors easier while they're on my shoulder. Now, I'm very lucky to have gotten into this early chase with two survivors, no less. They both play it a bit silly here, but that's no major deal for them. They seem to know some techniques that uh, fresh players do not. It can be assumed that they know how the trapper works, but that doesn't stop them from going down. And here's where the weakness of Hexes comes in. It is. It has only been a minute into the match, and already one of my perks is simply gone, with no value whatsoever. But it's fine. We press on. After all, I knew that the person who did the save had to be very weak. With that in mind, that was a very distressing sabotage play for me. It pays off for uh, survivors to act like cocky little shits sometimes. Sometimes they are just cocky little shits, but other times they're doing it solely to cause you to tilt. Tilting is the enemy. I did not wait out the sabotage timer properly, allowing that Claudette to flashlight blind me to seemingly little effect. I don't know what her plan was after the blind. Thinking on it, yes, these two were a team. Here we see the uh, mechanic of uh, endurance being given for 10 seconds to the person who comes off the hook. I'm happy to take those hits because it means that the survivors have to mend. It's unfortunate that she did not step on the trap there, this Claudette. It's very frustrating to me when they think they can get away with the same trick multiple times, and it's very frustrating to me when they do. For add-ons for my uh, bear traps power, I've uh, got the bear grease, which reduces the uh, sound of the trap setting to nothing as well as the gloves, which increase setting speed. Claudette decides to do a very silly thing and mend basically in front of me. I don't know what the plan was. Don't think it worked out. A 
very fortuitous. The trapper's power being entirely passive once you've set it up is a tremendous boon that basically no other killer benefits from in the same way. You don't have to think about the trapper's power necessarily once it's set up. You lay a trap, and at some point later in the match, it pays off. Now, Sable here fucked up. Fucked up the timing on the pallet drop. He fucked up the chase. But I don't know why I couldn't get the hook here. These survivors are trying something, and I don't think it's working. A little bit of a mechanical mishap here. It's fine. It's fine. Skill issue on my part. These survivors don't think about... that. They know how the trapper works, but they don't know how the trapper works. And they decide to move around into places they aren't, haven't scouted out within my domain. This allows me to crush them. <laughs> the risk I took was calculated, but man, am I bad at math. I heard a survivor working up here, and, well, I get her, but dedicated servers. <laughs> Goodbye, Michaela. You will not be missed. Now it's time for the other silly gamers. Now they've worked themselves into a three generators situation. Where they have to work on one of these three generators. But they, uh put the generators relatively close to each other in a way that allows me to defend them ridiculously well. Here, I fell for a distraction play where one of the survivors threw a pebble. I'll admit, I was not anticipating it, but I did think it was strange that there was basically no reason for a loud noise to appear there. However, it did not seem to have given them any advantage in actually working on a generator. As you can see from... Well... That generator is still regressing from the sparks that you can see on it. And here, they uh, reveal themselves to me by messing with one of my traps. 
At this point, I think I'm extremely safe because that generator has regressed to less than half progress. So I deem it safe to go find the survivor who stepped in that trap. I know that uh, survivors can get multiple attempts while I'm trying to close the distance. Fortunately for her, she makes it out of the trap. Unfortunately for her, I'm right there to pick her up. Fortunately for her, she has a uh, bo boil over. That's the perk. Boil over is a fun perk because it uh, makes struggles very hard. Misdirection. I fell for it, but that shouldn't get me down. After all, I found the blood trail easily enough. And soon enough, Sable goes down. Ah! Feng Min doesn't have very many options here, but she goes for the generator play anyway. She thought she could hide, but she brought a very bright cosmetic loadout. Survivors are very weird about doing that. Picking the brightest cosmetics they can to be attention grabbing in the hopes that it will piss you off. It doesn't work. And at the end of the match, as I wait for them to uh, get into a state where they can't unhook themselves, I simply uh, set the trap a few times to farm cunning points. I could have gotten the maximum if I hadn't uh, stopped to watch the beauty of the uh, entity taking these girls away. I'm surprised that I got iridescent medals here. I didn't think my performance was that good. And here, I take a screenshot of the scoreboard to upload it to nightlight.gg, a community resource that tracks stats for matches played. 